I'm outside the Vision Research booth at NAB. We have to go inside and see these seriously cool high-speed cameras. V710 is our highest performance camera targeted at uh, military, government, research, industrial applications. The resolution on the camera is 1280 by 800, and at 1280 by 800, it can shoot over 7,500 frames per second. Now, most high-speed cameras have a trade-off between speed and resolution. So as you reduce the resolution, the speed goes up. At its lowest resolution, this camera can shoot 1.4 million pictures each second. Often there's an experiment where the, a person needs a certain resolution. Well, you can set this camera to that resolution and know you're going to get the highest possible speed. Or some experiments or tests may require a certain speed, so you can program the camera to that speed and know you're going to get the highest possible resolution. So the camera really has very wide usages. Everything from use in the military to study ballistics or explosions or missile launches. It's used in uh, basic research to do particle image velocimetry work, for example. It's used to study uh, vocal folds in people. It's used to with an x-ray scintillator to look at knee joints as people run, for example. It's used in biomedical studies to look at pitchers, for example, to study, well, how can we train a professional baseball pitcher to be more injury free? Um, so the, the range of applications is just huge. This camera that's hidden underneath here is a, is a V640 camera. Now this camera has become very popular in slow motion replay for broadcast purposes. Uh, and the reason is, is it's a, a large sensor camera and at 1920 by 1080 it can shoot about 2,500 frames per second. Now you, you usually don't need that for sports broadcast which typically is from 300 to maybe 500 or so. But it does have the speed if you need it. The other thing about this camera is it's extremely high light sensitive. So if you have it in a studio environment where the lighting isn't perfect or whatever, you can still get really good shots with this camera. And finally, it has a feature that allows it to be connected to an EVS server and actually be controlled from a broadcast truck. So they can cue the camera, trigger the camera, cue the replay, and do the replay. So for example, at this year's Super Bowl, if you saw some of the ultra slow motion uh, replays that were done, they were done with this camera. And the replays you saw, at least the first time you saw them, were played back directly out of the camera. Now actually to understand a little bit more about how this camera is used, because we just provide the core component, and then we have a number of partners who will then take the camera and outfit it with this other gear in order to make it more broadcast ready. What I'd like to do is introduce you to a good friend of mine named Jeff Silverman, who really uh, has outfitted this XMO camera, and he can tell you a little bit more about it. What I've done is taken uh, Vision Research's cameras over the years and, and modified them in ways to make them more like a mainstream camera. So we're using accessories. Um, we have a, a Canon 11 by 4.7 B4 lens. We have a, a Panasonic uh, Veracam, I, Veracam eyepiece. Um, and we have, we're using other uh, things around the, around the camera to make them familiar and easy to use for broadcast professionals. At the Super Bowl this year, we had uh, eight cameras. Six were on CBS's broadcast, and NFL Films used two for their purposes. Uh, they were built uh, as a handheld, one handheld for CBS, and the other five were as hard cameras, two on carts and two up high. Um, NFL Films were handheld, but they were all uh, the same model. The, the V640 were used at the Super Bowl. Information Overdrivers, we want to know what you think about these phantom cameras, so tweet Cruise Control Cam. Until next time. So where do you download Information Overdrive? Go to Cruise Control's website and click Podcast.